when we're looking at scaffolds, there's a multitude of properties that we really need and it depends specifically on the application that we're using the tissue scaffold for. Uh, in, the, in the current paper, we used it for soft tissue. So we want something that's rigid enough to keep the mechanical strength, keep the stability, but we need something that's also elastic. Uh, that's very important to find that balance. And that's something that's currently uh, lacking with respect to biomaterials. My name is Jerry Zarnecki. I'm a mechanical engineering PhD candidate at the University of Dayton. So, so when we're looking at specifically the tendon or ligament injury, uh, you know, for example, in the elderly, you get a lot of uh, uh, degradation of the tissue and that tissue fails. And when that tissue fails, it snaps back to its ends. Now what they currently do is they'll repair it with a donor tissue of some sort and they'll augment the two ends of that tendon with additional material. Uh, that material is usually synthetic. The shortfalls on that, there's, there's a wide list. It's biocompatibility between people, it's uh, mechanical function of the tissue itself, so you don't really know where it's coming from. You don't know the strength of the tissue. You don't know how degraded it already is. You're also looking at, you know, is it, is it possible that that material is gonna fail, that those two ends that are attached is gonna fail again, and you're gonna have to go in and repeat the surgery. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to replace the whole idea of using donor tendon and additional materials to suture those two ends. We want to replace that with one specific material that we can use as a primary scaffold where the tissue can then grow on that scaffold and take over and restore the natural function. That's the holy grail of what we're talking about is we want one material to be able to withstand the properties that the body needs to serve as that organ, material, tendon, ligament, bone, whatever we need. So by tailoring our properties, we're looking at mechanical strength, we're looking at elasticity, we're looking at degradation, we're looking at uh, stability within that body, we're looking at biocompatibility. When we talk about a great product, a great result, we're not only, we're, we're not only aiming directly at the patient themselves. There's also the benefit to the surgeon. The surgeon has this material, he's able to keep it in, in the hospital for as long as he wants. He doesn't have to handle it in a specific manner. It's very flexible or it's very rigid, depending on the application. Uh, he can pull, he can twist. It's not really gonna affect the mechanical properties or it's not gonna affect the outcome of the surgery. And then we're also looking at the economy in general. So, so, the, so the global picture, by lowering the cost of surgeries, by producing a material that can be cheaply fabricated, mass produced, and shipped anywhere in the world, and it doesn't require a specific shelf life, so it can stay there. And so you're, you're, you're easing the demand to not only the patient, the surgeon, but society in general.